So you're at work or home and somehow locked yourself out of a Cisco switch. And if you're at work, you're probably sweating balls right now. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you the password recovery process for your Cisco switch, along with showing you how you can actually recover the configuration for the device so that you don't have to build this thing from the ground up again. But anyways, enough with the intro, let's get into it so you can recover your Cisco device. All right, so the password recovery process for a Cisco switch is pretty easy. It only takes three steps and uh, at least one console cable so that you can get into your device. Now the three steps include rebooting your device and interrupting the boot so that you can get into Raman mode. The second step is to change the boot configuration so that the switch ignores the startup configuration and boots up with essentially nothing on it. And the third step is copying over that old configuration that you wanted to recover or just wiping it if you wanted to start with a clean slate. And I'm going to show you how to do this on the older Cisco switches and devices that have a mode button on it. In this case, I'm using a Cisco 3750, but this is going to work for a lot of other older switches that are the same way uh, what you're going to want to go ahead and do is power off the switch if you haven't already done so and then you're going to want to go ahead and plug in your console cable one end goes into the console port of the switch the other end goes into your pc now i lied saying you only needed a console port you obviously also need some sort of terminal emulator software in this case i'm using putty and i'll leave a link to it below um, but so we're going to go ahead and switch over to my desktop and what we're going to see here i'm just on my desktop uh, i've got my esxi over here so what I'm going to search for is putty. I'm going to open that up. Now I'm going to switch this over to serial. Now it's going to default to COM1. You're going to want to switch this to the COM port that you're using to connect into your Cisco switch. And if you're not sure off the top of your head, what you can do is open up PowerShell and you can type in mode. And this will show you the different COM ports you have. Uh, it's most likely not going to be COM1. You'll probably have like COM2, 3, or 4, something like that. In this case, I'm using COM4. So I will switch this to COM4 and then my my speed I'm going to leave at 9600 that's the default now it could be different depending on if someone went ahead and changed your baud rate you can just google the different baud rates I'll probably just leave them on the screen somewhere here so you can see some of the other options that you might need to use but from there we'll just go ahead and press open and this is going to open up a terminal session now I'm going to make this a little bit bigger now from here I'm going to go ahead and plug the power cable into the switch and I'm going to hold down the mode button while it boots now I'm going to continue to hold this and I'm not going to let it go until we see this thing enter Raman mode. And there you go. Now we're in the Raman mode, which you can see is obviously the case because we've got this switch uh, prompt here. Now you may need to let go of the button once you see the text show up, or you might need to hit the button a few times. Uh, the variation on how long you have to hold the button and whether or not you have to press it a few times as it boots might change a little bit depending on your version of your switch but in my case i just held the button down as it powered up and once i saw the text i just let it go and that put me in raman mode so now that we're in raman mode we're going to go ahead and initialize the flash so flash underscore in it and then we're going to look for the old configuration and rename it so that when we reboot the switch it's not going to see essentially the startup configuration that it previously had and it'll just boot up as if it's a new switch so we will do dir flash and we can see here I've got my config.txt. I've also got a good old one because I did this earlier. Um, but anyway, so now we're going to rename flash config.txt to flash config.txt.old. I'm just going to put two. It doesn't really matter what you name it. And there you go. Now, if we do dir flash again to check its contents, you're going to see that that config.txt file is now no longer named config.txt, it's named config.txt.old. Now from here, we're going to actually boot the switch, and since it doesn't see the config.txt file anymore because it technically doesn't exist, it's just going to boot as if it's a new switch with no configuration on it. Now we're just going to do boot, and wait for the thing to boot. Five minutes later. All right, so the switch finally finished booting, and now it's asking me if I want to go through the initial configuration dialog. We're going to want to answer. Fuck no. And from here, we're in the switch. This is essentially a brand new switch. If you do show run to look at the running configuration on it. Oh, enable first, and then show run. You'll see that there's essentially no configuration on here. This is all just the basic stuff. Now, if we want to recover the configuration, we're going to want to go ahead and copy the configuration from that old configuration text and put it in the running configuration, essentially. So we'll do dir flash. And we'll see that config.txt.old file here. This is the configuration file that has all the old configuration on it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is copy flash and then config text.old2 and I'm going to copy it to the running configuration and just 
uh, destination file name it'll just be running config that's fine and now it's going through and reapplying all the configuration that we previously had on it we'll give this a second all right so now we have recovered the running configuration if i do a show run we'll probably see some old configuration on here that i had uh, let's see there we go i had scp server enabled on here i had some vlan tagging going across one switch you get the idea uh, however the whole reason we went ahead and did a password recovery was because we didn't know the password uh, to begin with so we'll want to go ahead and potentially create a new password or change the enable secret so from here we'll go configuration t and we'll do username i don't know we could just do admin if that's the case if we want to create a whole new user uh and then password or secret if you want to have it encrypted secret uh and i'll just say it's admin that's just going to be the password for this so username admin password admin and enter so now I've configured a username and password for this switch. Now, if I need to change the enable password so I can obtain elevated privileges, I'll need to change that. So we'll do enable secret, and then we'll just change that enable secret password to whatever we want. I'll just put admin for now. So now when I need to enable, I'll just use the password admin. And then uh, we can go ahead and do uh, do write memory or just do write mem, that's fine. And this is going to save the configuration. So now we have our old configuration back. However, we put a new username and password on here. Now you can delete the old username um, that you had previously on here that you don't know if you want. I'm not going to bother with all that, but you can. And that's it. That's how you do the password recovery process for older Cisco switches that use that mode button. But that's it, guys. That's how you do password recovery for older Cisco switches. If this was helpful, definitely drop a comment and like down below. I appreciate it. See you in the next one. Peace.